Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this busy morning. Uh, NBC News has learned that Senate Republicans plan to introduce a narrow coronavirus relief package today. I know that's very important to you. And this bill includes $10 billion for the U.S. Postal Service. Is this bill something you could support? Well, that's a beginning. Uh, thank you so much for having me this morning. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we need to sit around the table uh, and put everybody's experiences on the table uh, and then consider what the budget ought to be. I get a little bit upset when people set a number and then try to build a program to that number. We ought to identify exactly what the problems are and what we need to do in order to correct the problems and then let the experts tell us how much it will cost. That's the way you ought to run the government. Uh, this whole notion of running the government like a business is stuff that we got to get uh, the booze mouth ourselves of. Get that out of our heads. We are providing a service for the American people. We're trying to get people back well again. We're trying to get children back in school again. We're trying to get a voting process in place uh, so that people can feel their votes are secure. Let's put all that on the table. Let's determine what the program ought to be and then send it out to the scorekeepers and let them tell us how much it will cost and then uh, let's go forward from there. This whole thing of putting a number out of the air and then try to build a program to it, that's not the way you run the government. Except, of course, Except that is how the government is being run right now. So as logical as your idea may be, um, is there any chance it's actually going to happen? Mitch McConnell runs the Senate. Yeah, he runs the Senate, but he doesn't run the House of Representatives. And Nancy Pelosi is a very good advocate for doing things effectively, efficiently, and equitably. And that's the way we try to run our coronavirus uh, subcommittee. Do it effectively, do it efficiently, and do it equitably. This is the way you do it. Now, we may not get there, but that's the way we're going to start. And so when we get back Friday evening and, and, and get ready to vote on Saturday on the outside, that's the kind of program we're going to approve, and we'll send that to the Senate. Let the Senate approve whatever they want to approve, and then we'll come around the conference table and see what we can work out. Maybe uh, we can find a middle ground on this piece of legislation. Uh, we have not been able to do so on the HEROES uh, Act, and that's what we ought to do, really. Do you have any confidence, though, that that will happen? You may put together an extraordinary plan with the House when everybody gets back, but with no control of the Senate and with President Trump in the White House, can the American people actually get any of what you lay out for them? Yes, I think we can. I do believe that the American people will weigh in on this. Uh, a lot of people said a week ago uh, that we couldn't get anything done on the post office. Now the Senate is offering to get something done on the post office. We don't know what that something will be, but you never know until you get around the table. I do not like this thing of fine missiles across the country from one state to the other. Let's all come back to Washington. Let's all sit down in these conference rooms. We can do that socially distancing, and let's get a piece of legislation that's good for the American people. We want to have our kids back in school. We want to have uh, PPEs uh, for all of our essential workers. We want to have unemployment compensation for those who cannot go back to work. If that's what we want, the thing to do is get the representatives of the people around the table and let's hash out these differences so the American people can see us doing their work. I don't think they like this thing of uh, tossing missives from one side of the country to the other. Well, that is your message to the Senate, to other members of Congress, and to the American people. I want to get your reaction to former First Lady Michelle Obama's message last night. Let's, let's just share a little bit of that with our audience. We have got to grab our comfortable shoes, put on our masks, pack a brown bag dinner, and maybe breakfast, too, because we've got to be willing to stand in line all night if we have to. She's talking about voter suppression, Congressman. How concerned are you about voter suppression and the potential impact on this election? I'm very concerned about it, and I was very pleased to hear Ms. Obama say what she said last night. 
Uh, my daughter, uh, the one that's been running my campaign for re-election, is also running a get-out-the-vote effort. And she has been saying to people now, get your picnic baskets ready, get your picnic chairs ready, and let's have these long lines, have convenience uh, so you can sit down, don't have to wait, standing up. We are preparing for long lines. We are telling people, if we cannot have uh, voting by mail, people vote absentee in person. Most places here in South Carolina, they start 30 days out. So we got a plan that starts October 5th, and we're going to vote people like we've never voted them before. I would like to have mail-in balloting, but if we're not going to have an efficiently, effectively, and equitably run post office, we're going to have uh, absentee voting in person, and we're going to have picnic chairs, picnic tables. We are going to have the kind of voting that may look like tailgating. That's what we're going to do. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.